السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأراضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين برحمة الله وبركاته uh, I am very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Alhamdulillah after many months of waiting and planning uh, finally Alhamdulillah you managed to arrive in Qom Alhamdulillah safely and as you know uh, we had this uh, tradition of every year having summer course uh, we had five summer courses before COVID. Uh, unfortunately, it stopped because of COVID, but Alhamdulillah, this year is resumed. And in the last several years, we had also winners of Allah Metabatabai Award. So it's great joy to know that you are there. Unfortunately, I am not with you. Uh, in person, but my heart is with you. I pray that uh, inshallah every day and night of this trip would be very blessed and memorable inshallah for you. Uh, I am uh, supposed to talk about social velaya, but there was a request also to talk a little bit about Lady Ma'suma salamullah alayha. A uh, few days ago, I requested uh, one of the brothers in uh, ATA to send you the link for the four lectures on Lady Masuma. I don't know if you received the link or not. Did you receive the links? Yes or no? Yes? Okay. Uh, so. I hope inshallah if you didn't get chance before you watch later but also that series is available as a book and inshallah you will be given this book and you can read it uh, basically over years for my own personal you know understanding and also because I was you know speaking to many visitors, many people who came from abroad to home. I was little by little understanding something about Lady Masuma, his historical role, his uh, sorry, her spiritual role, her function in the spread of knowledge and spirituality, etc. And some of these ideas are put together in this series of four lectures which were delivered in the shrine of Lady Masuma, and then they are put as a book. Uh, I share with you just uh, some points and then inshallah we shift to our topic of social wilaya and inshallah if you have any questions you can ask me or brothers and sisters who are there and they help you with. You know some of the personalities their impact is during their lives. They have a life full of events, incidents, encounter with many people. But during their life, you can see that they have been impactful. Some people, their 
impact is during their life and continues also after their life. It's not that they are forgotten after they die. But interestingly, we have some people that they are not known that much to the people of their own time. And after they die or they pass away, little by little people know more about them and little by little their effect is spreading and strengthening. Lady Ma'suma Salamullah Alayha seems to be one of the people of the third category. She had not very long life. She had a short period of life. And there was no freedom for Ahlul Bayt salam in that time. Even, you know, the Imam Musa ibn Ja'far salam, the father of Lady, many years was in prison. Imam Raza, the brother of Lady, who was also her guardian and responsible for upbringing of Lady, had to move from Medina to Marb. Lots of pressure on Ahlul Bayt. So, as a woman of high status in Ahlul Bayt, in a very difficult time, short period of life, not having, you know, lots of facilities for communication, travels, etc. During her short period of life, her impact was not that much. Yes, people who were in contact with her were very impressed, but not many people were aware of her spirituality, teachings, etc. Her travel to see her brother after almost a year, you know, when Imam Raza moved to Marv, about a year after she decided to go and visit Imam Raza alayhi salam. So took her to a place that we call it Save. Save is a city now, very famous city. It's maybe about an hour distance from Qom. And in that area, they were attacked by some of the people who were against Ahlul Bayt salam, and some brothers, some members of that caravan were killed and lady asked to be moved to the city of Qom because city of Qom from the beginning of Islam was inhabited by the followers of Ahlul Bayt salam, and they were great narrators of hadith. In Qom, in addition to the shrine, which is very historical, we have, for example, Masjid of Imam Hassan salam, Imam Hassan al-Askari. This masjid was built with the instruction of the 11th Imam. It's very historical masjid and Alhamdulillah a few years ago, uh, the office of Ayatollah al-Uzma Gulpaigani Rahmatullah Alai and Ayatollah al Safi, they uh, refurbished the masjid. So, Qom was known for its loyalty to Ahlul Bayt and the lady asked to be moved to Qom but she was ill. There was a place that, which is known today as Bayt al-Nur. She was there for some days and worshipping Allah and then passed away and was buried in the garden of one of the Shia which later became the Shrine. This trip gave people of Qom opportunity to meet that lady, but that was for a short period of time. 
So if you look at the life of the lady, you don't see those many events, those many, for example, classes, courses, lectures, etc. But the way this lady is functioning and we find in our hadith is attaching to her exceptional role. And therefore we realize that her presence in Qom is almost like a beginning for a period of active role in a spreading light, knowledge, inspirations for generations to come. Before I continue, I would like to share with you some hadith and then I will explain more what is my analysis. Uh, these hadiths are available also in the book. As I said, this is something very ex exceptional. You know, we don't have such things about other places. For example, there is a hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Allama Majlisi Rahmatullah Alai in Biharul Anwar, volume 60, page 213. Quotes this hadith. Satakhlu kufatumin al mu'minin wa ya'zaru anha al ilm kama ta'zaru al hayyatu fi juhraha. ثم يظهر العلم ببلدة يقال لها قم ويصير معدنا للعلم والفضل حتى لا يبقى في الأرض مستضعف في الدين حتى المخدرات في الحجال وذلك عند قرب ظهور قائم According to this hadith, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, soon Kufa will be empty from believers. And knowledge will go out of Kufa as a snake goes out of its hole. Then knowledge will appear in a land called Qum. And this becomes a source of knowledge and merits to the extent that there would remain no mustad'af din Mustad'af means someone who has been weakened, weakened by unjust people. Mustad'af din means someone who has no access to true teachings of religion and is not able to practice religion. So, knowledge from Qom will spread to the extent that no mustad'af fiddin would remain hatta al-mukhaddarat fil-hijal even women in their houses would have access to knowledge all over the world any seeker of knowledge would have access to knowledge and this is near reappearance of our 12th Imam Qa'im. So at a time that the Shia were very few, little in number, they didn't have that much presence in the whole world. Some were there here or there, mostly in the Middle East. But Imam Sadiq says, Qom will become a source, a hub of learning and knowledge, and from there knowledge will spread all over the world before Imam Mahdi comes. 
and we see how this has happened. Alhamdulillah, and inshallah, more to come. Another hadith is again from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, and this is in Bihar al Anwar, volume 57. The previous one was from volume 60. This is volume 57, page 228. Inna lillahi haraman wa huwa makkah ala inna li rasulillahi haraman wa huwa al-madina ala wa inna li amir al-mu'minina haraman wa huwa al-kufa Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says truly Allah has a sanctuary which is makkah Rasulullah has a sanctuary which is Medina, Haram. Amirul Mu'minin has sanctuary which is Kufa. You know, people didn't know about Najaf. The grave of Amirul Mu'minin was unknown till the time of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Najaf and Kufa are very close to each other. Now, you can guess what would be the next Haram? Allah has haram is Mecca. Rasulullah has haram is Medina. Amir al Mumin haram has haram is Kufa. What is the next haram? You may say, okay, for example, Imam Hassan alayhi salam is Baghi, so it's already Medina mentioned. Then Imam Hussein is Karbala, so Karbala is the next haram. Then we have uh, for example, Imam Kazim buried in uh, Kazimain. So Kazimain is the next haram. Imam Raza is in Mashhad. This is the next haram. So you may expect like this. Then we have Samirra for Imam Hadi and Imam Askari. But this is not what Imam Sadiq says. After Amirul Mu'mineen, he says, that there is one haram for us and that is Qom. I read two versions of this hadith. One version is like this and the second version is more explicit. So the first version, which is on page 228, it says, Inna la amir al mu'minin haraman wa huwa al kufa ala wa inna qum al kufa tu saqira. Qum is a small kufa. So, haram of amir al mu'minin, which is kufa, is also present in qum. Ala inna lil jannati thamaniyata abwabin. Heaven has eight gates. Salasatun minha ila qum. Three gates are towards qum. Which means people through qum can go to heaven through three gates. Why you need three gates? Why not one gate? Either because the number is a lot or the qualities are different. So you need three gates. Then Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, Tugbadu fi hamra'atun min wuldi ismuha Fatima bintu Musa. Soon a lady from my progeny will die in Qom. Her name is Fatima, daughter of Musa. Musa ibn Jafar. Please listen very carefully to this part. وَتَدْخُلُ بِشَفَاعَتِهَا شِيْعَتِي الْجَنَّةِ بِأَجْمَعِهِمْ 
through her shafa, her intercession, all my Shia will go to heaven. So if you, someone is true Shia, you can say this person is Shia, will go to heaven through her shafa. In another version, which is in Bihar al Anwar, volume 99, page 267, we read like this. Inna lillahi haraman wa huwa Makkah, wa li rasoolihi haraman wa huwa al-Madina, wa li amir al-Mu'mineen haraman wa huwa al-Kufa, wa lana haraman wa huwa qum. Allah has a haram, which is Mecca. Rasulullah has a haram, which is Medina. Amirul Mu'minin haram, which is Kufa. We, Imam Sadiq says we, means Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Imam Zainul Abidin, Imam Baqir, Imam Sadiq, up to Imam Mahdi. We all have haram, one haram. Wallana haraman wa huwa qum, and that is qum. وَسَتُطْفَنُ فِيهِمْ رَأَةٌ مِنْ وُلْدِي Soon a woman from my progeny will be buried in Qum. تُسَمَّى فَاطِمَة Her name is Fatima. مَنْ زَارَهَا وَجَبَتْ لَهُ الْجَنَّةِ Whoever visits her, of course, with the conditions, whoever properly visits her, Vajabat lahul jannah. Heaven becomes necessary. Narrator says, Qala alayhi salam thalika wa lam tahmil bi Musa ummuhu. Imam Sadiq said this while still. Imam Kazim was not conceived. The mother of Imam Kazim had not yet become pregnant. So the father of Lady Masuma was not yet conceived. Two generations before, Imam Sadiq said this about Lady Fatima and the city of Qom. So it's not by chance that she is in Qom. This was something which was foreseen, which was planned. So, we have hadith like this. And then in addition, hadith about the significance of visiting this lady. For example, Imam Raza alayhi salam, because Imam Raza was alive when Lady Masuma passed away. As I said, after a year, she wanted to visit Imam Raza, but she couldn't visit Imam Raza. She died in Qom, and Imam Raza was still alive. Imam Raza alayhi salam said, Manzar al Masumata bi Qom ka manzarani. Whoever visits Masuma, who gave this title of Masuma to Imam to Lady Masuma? Imam alayhi salam. Her name is Fatima. Masuma is the title. Imam Raza calls her Masuma, Immaculate. Whoever visits Masuma in Qom Kamanzarani is like visiting me. Imam of her time says visiting her is like visiting me. If you ask Imam Jawad, oh Imam, your father said, whoever visits Lady Masuma is like visiting me. Do you accept the same? What would be the answer of Imam Jawad? So yes, whoever visits Masuma is like visiting me. If you ask Imam Hadi, would say the same. It's not that Imam Raza said, whoever visits her, it's like visiting me because we are brother and sister. No, it's not a matter of brother and sister. Imam Raza had many brothers. 
and others, you know, members of family. There's a special thing about Lady Masuma. So, if today we ask Imam Zaman, Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif, do you say the same thing that Imam Raza said? I think he says yes. Whoever visits Masuma is like visiting me. So if you are eager to benefit from meeting of Imam Zaman of your time, this shrine is the place for you to get that blessing. So let us reflect on these hadiths. Why so much emphasis on Qum? Why Qum is haram of all Ahlul Bayt? Why, why three gates of heaven face Qum? Why through her Shafa'a, Imam Sadiq says all our Shia will go to heaven? Why visiting her makes Jannah necessary? Why visiting her is like visiting Imam of your time? These are questions that need reflection. To add to this, there is a well-known also incident that can help us. Of course, these hadiths are enough, but this is also interesting. And this is why I call this book the second Fatima. One of the reasons this called second Fatima is this. That the father of Grand Ayatollah Mar'ashi Najafi. Ayatollah Mar'ashi Najafi, Ayatollah Al-Uzman Mar'ashi Najafi was one of our Maraja, passed away several years ago. He has established a very special, very important library with many, many manuscripts. And the way he managed to collect these books was for many years through working, through reducing his meals from three to two, fasting, praying on behalf of people and getting some money to be hired to do fasting and prayer of Qaza for people and buy books, Manubis, manuscripts which were sold to the you know people from outside Muslim world. He tried to save them. He's a great personality. In any case, his father was an alim in Najaf. And he very much wanted to find out the burial place of Lady Fatima to Zahra, salamullah alayhi. He has started a special a'mal, a special practice, and hoped that by finishing that, Allah will inspire him somehow. Maybe it was 40 days or 40 weeks. He did a special a'mal. Then he had a dream. In the dream, Imam Baqir or Imam Sadiq salam, told him, Alayka bi karimati ahl al-bayt. You must be focusing and trying to connect to the karima of Ahlul al-bayt, the honorable lady of Ahlul al-bayt. He thought karima ya ahl al-bayt means Lady Fatima al-Zahra. And said, actually, this is why I am doing this a'mal, these practices. I am doing them, these practices, to find out where is the burial place of Lady Fatima to Zahra, then I can go and visit and connect more. But then he was told, no. The grave of Lady Fatima to Zahra should remain unknown. Till Imam Mahdi comes, inshallah. There is a secret here. There is a 
question mark here. And this has to remain so that people reflect. What happened after the prophet? That led. To the. Radial place of Lady Fatima becoming secret. Karima to Ahlul Bayt is Lady Fatima to Masuma. When we say Alaika be Karima to Ahlul Bayt means Lady Fatima to Masuma. So her father decided to come and visit Om, and then later. Ayatollah Mar Ashi Najafi moved to Qom, settled in Qom, and for tens of years he was leading prayer inside the shrine. He was so dedicated that even for Fajr prayer at that time they used to close, the, the haram was closed during the night and even for Fajr. He was going and saying his prayer behind the closed door of Lady Fatima. And he was consistent and insistent. Finally, they said this Sayyid is coming here. So before sunrise, they were opening the door. He kept going, he kept going, he kept going till they started opening the gate for Fajr. And first with few people, he started Salatul Jama'ah and then it became massive Salatul Jama'ah with being consistent. So for tens of years, maybe if I am not mistaken, in my memory is 65 years, he was praying there and giving lectures. So why this lady is so special? Why she is someone that Ahlul Bayt had a special attention to her? We have many children of Imams. But why Qum is so special? In the book, I try to share my thoughts, but briefly. My understanding is that this lady with her presence in Qom, we don't think that she is dead. She is present, she is living. This is her house. You know, when you go to the shrine, this is not a graveyard. This is a house, is bait. And we are entering into the house which is one of the houses of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Qom, in Mashhad. These are parts of the house of the Prophet. When you go to Mashhad, inshallah, in Ezna Dukhul, when you seek permission to enter, you say, Allahumma inni waqaftu ala babin min abwaab buyuta nabiyyik. I am standing next to one of the gates of the houses of the Prophet. Ahlu Bayt nabi they have only one house. In Islam, we have only one house. That is house of the Prophet. This house has different entrance. One is from Qom. The house in Qom, where Lady Masuma is present, is living close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ahya'un inda rabbihim yurzaqun, is not only for the martyrs, it's for every person who reaches that level of closeness to Allah. They are alive, they are close to Allah, they receive sustenance from Allah. Lady Ma'asuma with her presence in Qom provides a spiritual atmosphere for two groups of people. Visitors and residents. Those who come for ziyara from any part of the world, 
they are very much welcomed in this place. This is Osho Ali Muhammad. It's a nest. A bird finds rest in the nest. I have heard from different people from different parts of the world. They say when we come to Qom, we have a special tranquility. We feel very much at home. Ziyara of this lady is very important and is like Ziyara of Imam of your time. Makes you know heaven, inshallah, necessary if someone is pious. But also for residents, those who want to come here and gain knowledge, implement and share. They come from different places. Most of the people in Qom who are studying are not from Qom. They are there away from home, family, their own town. They need someone to look after their, them. They need a motherly figure who looks after them. And Lady Ma'asuma has this role that provides people who want to learn with warmth of a mother. She embraces them with her love, support inspires them in their studies. So, through this lady and this shrine and this seminary, this hosa and connected places, through the graduates of this hosa, through the books which go from this hosa, lectures, etc., inshallah, we reach that point that Imam Sadiq said, لا يبقى مستضعف في الدين. There would remain no one that has no access to true religion. And we already see, Alhamdulillah, in any part of the world, today you have some access. Inshallah, this becomes more access through internet, access through books, access also through individuals so that they can have personal access inshallah so this is something about the lady and i hope inshallah it helps you in better uh, connecting and appreciating your presence in qom inshallah alhamdulillah rabbil alam sheikh rasifar are you there yes yeah. Uh, how much time we have? I don't uh, want to make them also tired. No, actually it's already 12 So inshallah they should leave here 12.40. So 35 minutes inshallah. We okay. Have. So I talk also a little bit about social wilaya. But are there any questions? If you have any questions about this part, I can happily receive your questions. No question? Can you hear me? Yes, Sman. Um, why do we accept or what do you say about the Hadith that says uh, if you visit Lady Masu by God, heaven becomes necessary for you, but then you follow with the condition if they are biased. So it's really about you can only get into heaven if you are pious, but why have 
visiting Lady Muslim Man makes it necessary to you. Because if it's because if you've been to Lady Muscle Michael many white wives, you won't go to heaven. So why are we having this extra part when that's not the most foundation strongest condition to get into heaven? Why are we accepting that as a result? Sheikh uh, Rasifa, could you repeat the question? So if I understood the question is about conditions for Ziara to be accepted and qualify you for heaven? It was Question about this? Yeah, she explained again. Yeah. So you said if you visit Lady Muscle Michael, heaven, um, it, it's it, you like you will enter heaven. It becomes necessary, but yeah. then you follow it with only if you're pious. That sounds like that's the condition with which you can only enter heaven, not if you visit Lady Muscle Michael. So why are we accepting or having the hadith when it's not something? on its own that allows you to get to heaven it's only if you are pious yeah was it clear but that's a good start talk about it again yes thank you very good question actually i very much was thinking should i expand on that or not but the time was limited so i said i leave it and it's good that you asked thank you very much you know, when we say whoever visits her, heaven becomes necessary. Certainly this doesn't mean whoever goes inside the walls of shrine goes to heaven. Many people may go to the walls of sh shrine and, you know, may have big e problems. So it's not uh, something that uh, can be translated or interpreted in a physical way. Ziyara doesn't mean to go inside the building. Ziyara is a concept and not everyone is Zair. You know, for a historical building, whoever goes and visits, we say is a visitor. But for a spiritual place, pilgrim or za'ir is not just someone who goes inside the building. Actually, it can be za'ir from distance, <laughs> even from not, you know, being inside the building, you can be Zair. Zair is a spiritual pilgrim. So, uh, inshallah, maybe in Mashhad, uh, I have a lecture, I think, with you about Ziyara. We can talk about Ziyara. So, whoever visits Lady Ma'asuma properly, if Ziyara takes place, with the conditions that Ziyara has, then heaven becomes necessary. What are the conditions of Ziyara? One is that Ziyara should be with Ma'rifah. Therefore, in some hadith says, Arifan bihaqqiha. If someone does Ziyara, while has ma'rifa about her rights. Arifan bihaqqaha is very important. So if I don't know who is this lady, what role she has, I don't acknowledge that. Sometimes I don't know, sometimes I know, but I don't acknowledge. Then I may not benefit. Number two. إنما يتقبل الله من المتقين. Allah accepts any action only from the pious people. Those who are not pious, if they do something, if it is wajib, okay, their taklif is done. For example, 
If someone is a sinner and prays Salatul Zor, Salatul As, fast, okay, taklif is dropped. But there is a difference between Seha and Kabul. Do you know the difference between validity of action and acceptability? When is Salat is valid and when Salat is accepted? Who knows? It's valid if you follow all the rules uh, oh. and accept it if you're sincere. If you follow the rules of fiqh, your salat is valid. But is salat necessarily accepted? No. For example, if someone is a sinner, salat may not be accepted. Or if someone has no presence of heart, Salat may not be accepted, but it's valid. So you don't need to repeat it. You will not be questioned why you didn't say Salat, but Salat may not bring the outcomes, the effects that Salat can bring. So if someone visits Lady Ma'asuma, a mu'min, a mu'mina, a believing man, woman, with understanding, with humility, with taqwa, with understanding the status of this lady, acknowledging her right, this will qualify them for going to heaven. But if a sinner who insists on sinning goes there, cannot say, okay, I'm going to heaven anyway, so I don't need to worry about my sins. Or someone has been, you know, doing zolm to people. So, you know, I go to heaven and then I go to heaven. No, it's not like that. So general conditions for acceptance of amal must be there. And true ziyara should take place. Uh, I use sometimes this example. Uh, someone says, I don't have house for my family, children, etc. We have difficulty in finding houses to rent, etc. Can you help me to buy a house? We say, okay, how much you need to have a reasonable house? For example, he says, $100,000. We give him $100,000. After some time we meet him, we say, okay, where is your house? He says, I don't have house. We gave you $100,000. You said it's the price of a house. He says, yes, but I had 100,000 debt. <laughs> I had first to give my debts. And then when I paid my debts, I didn't have anything to buy house. So. We gave him enough to buy a house, but he doesn't have house. Why? But because he was in minus. So if you are in minus and go to the shrine, you may still get something, but this doesn't mean that you can go to heaven necessarily. But if you are a person who is careful, who is repentant, who is sincere, with ma'rifah, with love, you go for ziyara so that you are not in minus already or too much in minus, then inshallah you go to heaven. So every person would benefit. Every person would benefit if they want to benefit. But depending on your condition, you can go higher, but some people go higher to reach zero. <laughs> some people go higher from zero. Some people go higher from even a high place. Every single person who goes inside the shrine has his or her own condition. I don't think you can find two individuals the same. Even two individuals cannot be the same. There are so many differences between people. And everyone can benefit. But to go necessarily to heaven has conditions. I hope was clear.
Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, in the continuation of this question, so yeah. isn't taqwa enough for entering Jannah? So, for example, if someone with taqwa can enter Jannah, what's the role of ziyara here? Uh, yeah, very good question. If we are muttaqi, then what else we need? First of all, even a muttaqi may sometimes forgets. Quran says, إن الذين اتقوا إذا مسهم طائف من الشيطان تذكر فإذا هم مبصرون المتقي may forget but they remember or a muttaqi may even after some time loses taqwa for example some people when they are young very young they are very pious then little by little they unfortunately lose their taqwa. Or some people when they are in middle age, when they become busy with society, social positions, etc., they may lose their taqwa. If we are muttaqi and manage to have accepted ziyara, this inshallah will save for us our taqwa. This will also, inshallah, increase our degree of taqwa. So it's not useless. We say, okay, I am muttaqi anyway. No. Even muttaqi need shafa'a. Even muttaqi need help because sometimes they forget things. And also because they may not lose it. Sorry, they may not keep it later. They may lose it later. Plus, as I said, maybe in that, you know, very briefly, even those who are not muttaqi, if they go with understanding and they say, you know, please help me to change. Please forgive, oh Allah, please forgive my sins because of me making efforts to come here. This also helps. Uh, in Dua'i Kumail, we say something. I have a quiz for you. Please listen carefully. In Dua'i Kumail, we say, Allahumma gfir li al-dhunub al-lati tahbisu dua Oh Allah, please forgive for me the sins which block dua. So there are sins that don't let your dua to rise, to ascend, to be heard, to be accepted. Yeah? Is it clear? There are sins that block dua. Tahbisu dua. Okay. Allahumma gfir liya dhunuba allati tahbisu dua. Is it a dua or not? It's a dua. So if my duas are blocked, then how can I make dua to unblock? Did you get the question? Is the question clear? Yeah. If duas are blocked, so how can I then pray to unblock? The answer is that istighfar is a dua which is never blocked. Any person in any circumstances, no matter how good or bad that person is, if sincerely ask for forgiveness, this dua always can answer. So, if a sinner who is not muttaqi but sincerely asks for istighfar, goes to the shrine 
for asking for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be able to get rid of sins. These will also help. Is therefore helpful for everyone. The main thing is that you have to be going there with understanding, with attention, with sincere intention, not to show off. Get into the spiritual sanctuary. Physically, it's easy. But spiritually, get into the sanctuary. You need preparation, you need sincerity, you need the permission. And everyone can benefit. Uh, I have one more question. Alaikum. Alaikum assalam my question is, what is it in short? Forgive me, I think you talked about it, but um, I missed it. What is it in short that actually separates um, Lady Masuma from the other children of the um, um, And why does she have her own ziyara, for example, while others don't? Yes. In the book, I have a uh, a discussion about how can we understand the significance of any Imam Zada, any child of Imam. Our Imams have different children and we know burial places of many of them. In Iran, we have many uh, places that belong to the children either or grandchildren of Imams. But how we can understand their significance and their special place? One is about historicity of this place. There are places that from the very beginning have been known to the Shia community that this place was visited by that personality and this shrine is the right place for the burial place. Sometimes we are not clear. Sometimes based on some evidence they say here maybe this child of imam is buried there is evidence but there is no tawato there is no frequently narrated sources lady masuma is someone that we are 100 percent sure visited qom and was buried in qom and was buried in this place and since her departure till today, this place is visited by Shia, including the high rank ulama, marajah. This is one point. The other point is recommendation for ziyara from imams. Not every place has these recommendations. We have recommendation from Imam Reza, Imam Jawad, even Imam Sadiq from before referred to this. To the extent to say that visiting her is like visiting me, whoever visits her, you know, goes to heaven. People through her Shafa go to Jannah. These are also very special. And to have recommended ziyara from Masum. This is also you know, what you recite as recitation, ziyarat name. This is also not available for all children of Imam. And fourth, the role that she has, as I said, in the hadith. For example, 
we have brother of Imam Raza alayhi salam in Shiraz, Shah Chara. So it has a very a spiritual you know, shrine and you know, many people visit every year. But we don't have the same thing that we have about Lady Masuma for brother of Imam Raza alayhi salam. It's not just a matter of being a daughter of Imam or sister of Imam. She was a true daughter. She was a true sister, true aunt. And she is someone that Allah has a special role for her in Akhirul Zaman, in upbringing generations of scholars. So this is, as you mentioned, very special, not this is something available for every shrine, for every Imam Zada. There is a discussion about this in the book. Thank you very much. You're welcome. May Allah bless you. Sir. Thank Alaikum uh, salam So I read somewhere yesterday that uh, when you visit the shrines of the Imams of the Masumin, uh, you recite a uh, and if you get tears in your eyes, then it's a sign that you've been in that position of nature. So not everyone cries so easily. Are tears the only I understood the first question was about as not the whole and you know should the tears for example come so that we have permission or not uh, I didn't get the second question the second question is about uh, as someone's applicating to Allah how can I know for sure that my duas have been accepted ah okay thank you inshallah in the lecture I have with uh, you in Mashhad about Ziyara, uh, we can talk more about this concept of Ezna Dukhul, but uh, because you ask and also because you are doing Ziyara in Qom, so maybe I need to explain a little bit. Ezna Dukhul is not just a formality. As in the Dukhul is not, you know, something that it's just a protocol, you know. When you go to any place, you have to get permission. As in the Dukhul is like a condition for being able to enter. You cannot enter a spiritual places without permission. You can enter physical places with permission or without permission. <laughs> yeah. So, for example, thieves enter inside the building without permission. They can enter. They shouldn't, but they can enter. Or even sometimes maybe some people are rude, impolite, without permission they enter your house. When they see the door is open, for example, they enter the house. It's possible. In the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, some people used to go into the house of the Prophet without permission, because Rasulullah didn't have you know security guard you know to stop people. And Allah then said, "Ya ayyuhaladina amanu la tadkhulu buyut al Nabi illa an yuzan Allah." Without getting permission, don't enter the house of the Prophet. But there is also a spiritual entrance. If you want to enter 
into a spiritual place, you certainly need permission. Physical place, you should get permission, but a spiritual place without permission, you cannot enter because you don't enter with your body. Body enters another physical place, object, whether you want it or you don't want it, whether you like it or you don't like it, it happens. Sometimes by mistake, I go to someone's house, maybe. I thought in my house then, or my friend's house. For physical entrance, there is no condition except that object going inside that place. But for a spiritual entrance, which is through heart and mind, then you need to know what is that place to intend it and you should have intention of entering. And if that place is a high place, you need also permission. Because that is not your level. If something is in my level or under me, Maybe I can go easily. But if I want to go to a higher place, I need permission. Or answers, inshallah in Mashhad I will explain. These are the houses that Azinallahu and Turfa'ah wa yudhkara fi hasmu. These are the houses that Allah has permitted to be elevated and become place of his worship and remembrance. As in Allah and Turfa'a. So for me to enter them, I need to rise and this needs help and help comes if I ask for help. And that is through Ezna Dukhul. So I am asking a mom or a lady who is buried in the shrine, please take my hand so that I enter. My Not my physical hand. Please help me so that I enter. Therefore, if they give you permission, means they are taking your hand to enter. Then you should feel something. You should feel some openness in your heart, some humility in your heart. Maybe tears come, sometimes maybe tears don't come, but you should at least feel some readiness for entering. What was the second question? I forgot. The second question was about acceptability of the duas. How do I know that my duas are? Ah, yes, yes, thank you. How I can be sure that my duas are accepted? <coughs> duas, if they are done properly, are always accepted. Man o'otiya dua, o'otiya al-ijab. Hadith says, if you are given tawfiq to do dua, to make dua, it's certainly accepted. We don't have any dua which is not accepted. But the answer may come in the way you asked or in a different way. It may come soon or later. So sometimes Allah gives you what you wanted quickly. Sometimes Allah gives you what you wanted later. Sometimes it's not maslaha. Allah gives you something better than what you asked. On the day of judgment, when people see what Allah gives them for the duas which were not accepted in the way that they thought they wish none of their duas were answered in dunya and were saved for their akhirah so you will certainly 
have attention of Allah, a job of Allah, and you will certainly get something. I'ta, because there are two elements, a job and I'ta. You ask, Allah says, yes, I heard you, and then I will grant you. But I will grant you what suits you. It can be the same thing you ask quickly or later or something better. Sometimes maslaha for you or for others is to give you something else. Maybe, for example, 10 people are asking for the same thing. It cannot be given to 10 people. <laughs> One simple reason why Allah cannot always, you know, give us whatever we want. Or sometimes you ask for something, it's not your maslaha. But he will give you something better. No dua is useless. No dua is, you know, rejected. If it is dua, in the sense that I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with honesty. You know, if I ask for knowledge, I should also try to seek knowledge. If I ask for rizq, I should also try to work. If I ask for up, good upbringing of my children, I should also try to learn to ask to do something. If dua is honest, certainly has uh, hearing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Udu'uni astajib. Therefore, hadith says, man u'tiyad du'a, u'tiyad ijab. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. And I think time is very short, so I don't know about social relaya, when it is possible for us to, <laughs> inshallah, have it. Yeah, so maybe inshallah in another place, inshallah, another time, uh, we can talk about social wilaya. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, is it possible to end the session with some du'as from your and, side? And inshallah, we, take inshallah. we can Thank make you. some du'as together, inshallah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubu ilayhi. Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubu ilayhi. Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubu ilayhi. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا مناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا O oh Allah, please forgive all our sins, mistakes and shortcomings. Please give us tawfiq to serve you with every talent that we have, with every skill that we have, with all our power and energy. Please make our Imam Zaman pleased with us. Please include us among the people that Imam Zaman prays for them every day. Please give shifa to all people who are ill, especially those who have difficult illnesses, those who have mental illnesses, please give them shafa. Please send your rahmah and maqfara to all mu'mineen and mu'minat who have passed away, especially those who have rights upon us. Please bless our parents who are alive with health and dignity and joy and enable us to serve them and to bring joy to them. And please be very forgiving and generous with those parents who have passed away. Please unite our community and strengthen our families and help us to find in this day and age what you expect from us and to be able to implement them, inshallah. Amin ya Rabbal Alam. Please uh, remember us also in your du'as. Uh, we are very much in need of your du'as. I also pray for success of your trip and inshallah for getting your hajat while you are there inshallah thank you very much definitely thank you, thank you.